Okay, guys, I have some sad news. I uh, killed my grinder. Um, it was pretty old, and I actually only got it for like $25 at like a thrift store or something, but I was pushing real hard yesterday, and because uh, I don't really like ch changing out of the Tyvek suit and all that stuff to take a break, so I was just trying to push real hard to finish, and it died. Uh, you can see here it... <laughs> it's alive! So yesterday it was like grinding and not going good. It actually didn't sound too bad right now, but... <laughs> but we got a new grinder. It looks pretty awesome. Uh, it was a victory for Home Depot because uh, they gave us a price match and they actually had it in stock. So let's take a look. Oh yeah, look at that shiny newness. <laughs> okay, so my favorite thing about it is that the handle is actually way back here. Because I never use the guard. So, it'll keep my hands plenty far away. And my knee. So I've got some nice scars here to remember the old grinder by. Perfect. So, and it's got a lock so I can lock it on and just go to town. Uh, it's, I basically wanted the strongest four and a half inch grinder I could find and this was it. Uh, it's. 13 amps, 9,000 RPMs, and it fits all the four and a half inch grinding discs I already bought, so. You definitely need four and a half inch for a boat, especially because there's lots of tight places. And I, take the, I took the guard off because it always seems to get in the way and it makes it kind of hard to see what I'm doing. So, that's my preference though. I would not recommend taking the guard off uh, for most things. Remember, no guard equals this. <laughs> Let's fire it up. Okay, moment of truth. His brand new grinder. I think it's I think it's it's definitely stronger than the other grinder, so this should make life a million times better. All right, I'm uh, moving on to the uh, front deck of the boat. I'm going to try to get a little bit done here, at least get it up, um, get these holes covered. I'm going to have to kind of do it in sections because I have to leave a place for me to, to stand and work on it. So I'm thinking I'll do like uh, here, like in two pieces, and then finish that and then move back to where I'm sitting now. So let's take a look at what I just cut up. Definitely feels wet. And of course, it peels right up. Uh, 
Oh yeah. So I'm gonna keep working my way back. I think I found a pretty good solution here to working on the bow of the boat. So I was running out of room to stand in the bow of the boat, uh, replacing the core. I think I found a pretty awesome solution instead of kind of crawling around on the edges. So there's the core and I've got a nice little perch right on this nice mobile platform here I'm just going to slowly shave down the edge of the plywood here until it until it matches the edge Got to set the depth back to the 3 8 inch plywood so I don't cut through the anything I don't want to. Doing a little more of the front deck of the boat. Going pretty good, I'm still doing sections. So a few uh, tips I have. Uh, when you're cutting up the sections, of course I removed all the hardware, took out that little water uh, fill spout. You wanna find where the core ends and where the it just meets straight fiberglass one way I did that is just when I did my cut this way you can actually look down into the cut and if you're lucky you'll see wood and you'll see right where it ends and it's just fiberglass and that's where you want to start cutting because if the core doesn't go all the way to the edge so you can see here it starts about there I've got the front uh, panel back on and I'll cut out this section, do one more section of plywood, put the fiberglass back on top and once that's done I'll start working from here back. Uh, this side was all pretty bad. This side might be more promising, we'll see here in a second. Almost there. Actually the hardest parts to bring up are the spots where the core is still good. Almost there. Once I get the edges up, at one point you can just kind of start pulling on the whole thing. There we go. Pretty bad at the front there, but 
pretty promising starting from here. So hopefully a plenty of this side deck going back is still going to be good. Going back that way. I definitely recommend taking the core up as soon as you get it off because the when it's wet it's a lot easier. As soon as it dries it'll be twice as hard. So I wouldn't recommend taking the fiberglass up and like letting it sit for a day or a couple days and then go into it. Go at it right away. You'll see here I can basically just bring the hammer sort of so it slides parallel to the fiberglass and I can get a bunch up just like this. Then once I can't get any more up with the hammer, I'll come in with the chisel and get everything else that's hard to get up. What I'm doing is, I've got most of the four deck done. Working my way back on the port side. Because I don't have any bulkheads in the boat, I'm kind of worried about doing it all at once and causing it to, to deform or warp. So I'm doing it in pieces. So, <clears throat> so I'll cut a bit out, skip a part, cut some more, skip, and uh, let that part in between help keep the structure of the boat. So I'm letting these parts dry. As soon as they're dry, I'm gonna put the new balsa in and then laminate it back over top and then do the sections that are remaining on this side. So port side should be done in two weeks maybe. I finally got to the stern here and I ran into a good core so I stopped. Well, I thought I was done with the tarps, but I'm not. And with a very heavy heart, I put more tarps on. Um, I was originally hoping that I would get enough uh, dry days in a row to just do the deck real fast in sections. Uh, but that didn't work out, so... Uh, this seems to be working out pretty good. I just got a little suspended area. Uh, sitting on top of the boat. Um, pretty easy to do. I was thinking of doing something more substantial with you know a whole roof kind of uh, beams coming out the sides but it, when it's high enough it just kind of hangs over the edge and gives me enough space to still work on the deck here. And it's raining so working out pretty good. Uh, it's definitely just temporary, so that's why I didn't want to put too much effort into it, but it's working. Alright guys, we got our mast support painted up, ready to go back in the boat. I'm not sure how we're going to get it up there, but me and Andy are going to give it a shot. So I think we'll like try to put it above our heads. Ready? Are you lifting? Yes, I'm lifting. Wait, what's what's that over there? What? Uh, under that pile of trash. Huh. I don't know what where you're at. I think the last owner must have had this. Well, we'll give it a shot. Guardian, live your side. 
Wingardium Leviosa. You're saying it wrong. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Wingardium Leviosa. Hey, it worked. Huh? Way now. Who would have thought? Good job. So I just realized something uh, for cutting out the new balsa core. The panels that I cut out of the top deck are almost exactly the size I need, so I'm going to actually use them for a template with a little adjustments here and there. So I've got this light on the balsa, and I know that the outside edge is going to be a little shorter because there's a, a bevel and then I know that the inside edge is going to be actually a half inch wider because it goes under the the next uh, piece of fiberglass on the that's still on the boat made the cut So not perfect, but very close, close enough that I can just come in and trim it a little bit. So that'll that actually save me probably 20 minutes of when I did it the old way. I would just lay the piece on and slowly trim it till it was right. This piece is going to slide right under here. And actually what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll sand this because it's, you know, it's not, it doesn't easily fit in. And then I'll also leave room for the resin to get in between and stick. <clears throat> so I got tired of doing the deck in sections, uh, so what I've done is I've jacked up the top deck and put the mass support back in and then I took the jack and put a beam in the middle section to uh, support the top deck and also because it had sort of sagged over the decades uh, this is sort of putting it back up to its normal uh, level so that way as I do the core it's He's setting, you know, at the at a good uh, angle as it's to the original angle it should. I've got all the holes uh, duct tape underneath in preparation for doing the core up here. So all these little holes. are now uh, duct tape over so it doesn't drip through and it should pull up and seal it. I've got the new core sanded so you can see how it's uh, got a little bevel to the end here. So it fits right in underneath there. Now I'm just gonna go to the back section and do a little chiseling to make it fit because it kind of tapers off up there. So I just want to show you guys how I sort of fit the, the little small pieces of uh, core that uh, need to be filled in. Um, I've actually found that just using a pair of scissors is the easiest way. Uh, it's really easy to even cut the balsa with them. 
Now, if you need to get a real sh uh, straight section, you, I wouldn't do this because it kind of cracks it. But um, for this section, I'll just sort of get a general uh, fit, so about up here. So I'll cut it along the pre-cut uh, sections. And then I'll come in and just start fitting it in, just sort of by eye. I'll just cut out till I get one dimension good. And then I'll come in and do the other direction. And I just sort of start out a little larger and just sort of bring it in till it's perfect. And I'm not getting it exactly perfect because the resin will fill in the gaps here. Uh, but that looks good. As you can see, I've got this side all fitted. I've left everything that's been dry in and I just sort of fit it in around it. And then I'll try to get this uh, set in today, get the panels back on top, let it sit overnight, and then I'll, I'll come in and uh, sand out the, uh, the uh, where it meets and then, uh, and then lay the new fiberglass in and it'll be all done.